Isn't it a blessing to be able to worship together today? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're so glad to be able to worship in the Lord's house. I know that uh, we, we've got several of our folks out on vacation, so be in prayer for them as they're traveling today. Uh, that last trip before school starts. And uh, we want to remember them. And also, uh, uh, of course, next week we want to uh, pray for our students. We're going to have a, a service uh, where we, we dedicate our, our, our year to our Lord and, and uh, pray for our students, pray for our teachers. And so uh, let me encourage you to be a part of that here next week as we're able to, uh, to plan for those things and what the Lord's going to do. Uh, we do have uh, um, maybe a little bit of an adjustment to our, our program this morning. We have with great intention been looking forward to a day where we're uh, able to get back to a fellowship hymn. And, and, uh, but with the, the rise in some of the cases that are around, we felt like it would be better for us to, uh, to just wait on that. And so we're going to wait a few more weeks. And so if you would like to, uh, we had our offering plates up front. So um, I know for several of you that were looking for them, uh, they're now out back again. And so uh, we're not going to be passing the offering plate today uh, or have our fellowship hymn, which is listed in your bulletin. So we'll, uh, but we look forward to a day very soon when we're able to do that. So, and you know, today we, we begin by a celebration. And I don't know about y'all, but I get so excited when we get to celebrate what the Lord does in, in lives. And so uh, uh, one of the things that, that the ordinances of the church is, is to be able to celebrate baptism. And, and so this morning, and, and I'll read this pastor scripture out of Matthew. Scripture says in Matthew chapter 3, starting in verse 13 and following, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased." Today, we have the privilege of celebrating baptism with my brother in Christ, Taylor Pulver. Taylor, have you asked Jesus into your heart and experienced Him as your Savior, Lord? Yes. Then in obedience to the commands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I baptize you as my brother in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Wow, isn't that a blessing? What a blessing to be able to celebrate together. Uh, you know, God's blessed us with a, a great church family. And as we celebrate today, we're going to celebrate uh, in some praise and worship. And I'm going to ask Brother Mike if you wouldn't come and, and uh, if you wouldn't mind to go ahead and, and uh, with our announcements and things that we have to do and, um, and lead us in our worship. Good morning, everyone. It is good to have you here this morning. Uh, we want to welcome our visitors. It's good to see folks back with us. Uh, so... Got several announcements. If you've got a bulletin, if you don't have one, I encourage you to get a bulletin so you can see them. Uh, the announcements that we have, we've got uh, next Sunday, Cal mentioned just a little bit about the uh, teachers and students. We're going to pray for them as they start back to school. I know this week is the official start, but uh, next Sunday's the day that we've got scheduled for, for our prayers for them. Uh, August the 14th, that's the day that you want to mark on your calendar for the, the kids here from 9 to 12 years old. We're going to have a fish camp. Curtis Moore is going to come down and teach you where all the best fishing holes around are. I think, I think he said he wasn't going to. For beginners. Oh, okay, for beginners. I'm sorry. I thought I'd seen 9 through 12. So, so for beginners, so if you're like me and you need a little help tying the knots on there so they don't slip off or whatever, Curtis is going to work on that. He'll talk to you about casting and not hooking your neighbor and all those kind of things. So, so plan on coming out for that. That'll be a great time. Uh, August the 18th, Awana is scheduled to start back on Wednesday night, so, so be aware of that. All the kids need to plan to be here. 
And then on August the 21st, we got a whitewater rafting trip. I didn't check, the sign-up sheet's still out front. So next week is the last week to sign up if you're interested in going to the Okoye, uh, and that, that's on the 21st of August. So, so those announcements are in here, and then also our nursery and children's church for next week are listed, so if you're on the schedule, just be aware and be prepared, uh, because you never know how many are back there. Uh, prayer requests that we've got. We have a, a lot of folks on our prayer request list. If you would take a look over those, a few updates. Rhonda Nickel, we want to be in prayer for her, especially she's had a, a setback, I believe. Is that correct? So we want to keep her in our prayers, lift her up. Uh, we, we need to add Jeff Langley's father. Uh, he's also having some problems, so we need to keep him in our prayers. Um, and then David Cobb passed away this week, so we want to be in prayer for his family. We didn't know about that until this morning. So we want to, to update those three. Um, others, as Cal mentioned a minute ago, COVID is back among us, so they say. And so we've got to try to keep it down. Just, just It is a very real thing. We recognize that. But we're not in fear. It's out of an abundance of caution that we're not doing these things. So... Uh, don't think that we are afraid of, of that because God will take care of us, but we need to be smart about what we do. So we're not going to do the offering. We're not going to do the fellowship hymn, but we are going to sing all the songs. So just, just be prepared to stand up for a little while. Uh, are there any other announcements or prayer requests that I need to add? Okay, great. Okay, so... Okay, Steve, Steve Cochran. All right. Any other prayer requests this morning we need to add? All right. If not, Gary Newby, would you open us with a word of prayer this morning? If you would, now let's take our hymnals, or you don't have to have a hymnal if you would rather read it from up front. But let's stand together as we do our songs. To God be the glory.
46. Love lifted me. <coughs> And so we'll sing through this chorus twice and just uh, take some time and welcome the people around you, I guess, close by. So 386, the family of God. 
That makes it a lot easier on you, doesn't it? It, it? I mean, just that one button makes Ralph feel so much better. It just does. I, you know, uh, this morning is a, it's a blessing for me. I'm going to tell you what, I, I love the, the opportunity we have to celebrate baptism. To me, that is a, uh, that's a celebration for our whole church family, uh, where we get to celebrate um, the decision that, that that a heart is made for Christ. And, and you know, it's as a family, we have, a, there's a lot of times that we get to celebrate together. And this is just a special time, uh, a special time for us as, as we celebrate what God's done in somebody's life. So uh, this morning, if you will, take your copy of God's Word, turn over with me to Acts chapter 8. We're going to be looking at baptism this morning. And, and why, uh, why baptize, uh, why do we baptize? And this ordinance of baptism that's, that's ordained here in the Bible. As you're turning over to Acts chapter 8, we're going to be looking in verse 36 through 38. I heard the story of a man and his wife that had went to a, uh, a marriage enrichment. She had got on him and got on him and got on him. We need to go, we need to go. And so he finally relented and said, okay. He said, but I tell you what, if we get through that first speaker and, and I, I don't think that, that, you know, that I'm getting anything, then I think we can go. And she made the deal with him. Okay, that'd be fine. And so the first speaker got up and towards the end of his, his presentation, uh, he told him, he said, I, I bet that most of the husbands here don't even know what their wife's favorite flyer is. And he hit her and said, come on, let's go. <laughs> and she said, why? And he said, because I know your favorite flyer is self-rising. So, <laughs> it was a long weekend. So. 
Acts chapter 8 this morning, we're looking here as what God's Word says in Acts chapter 8. We're going to be starting in verse 36 and following, and out of reverence for God's Word, if you're able, I invite you to join me standing as we read here, Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and following. God's Word says this, and as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for how it applies to our hearts and lives today. And Lord, it's my prayer today that you just might move in our hearts and lives as we, Lord, look at this, this ordinance of baptism, Father, that you have established. And Lord, that uh, as, as a church family that we get to celebrate in. God, I pray that you just might move our hearts and lives today. And, and Lord, that you just may draw us near to you. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. And Lord, we thank you for Jesus that died for us. And Father, it's my prayer that if there's someone here today that's never invited him into their heart to be their Savior, and Lord, that today they would come to a saving knowledge of Christ. Lord, that they would begin a new life in him before it's eternally too late. And God, it's my prayer that you might encourage us as Christians that we examine our hearts and lives. And Father, make sure that, that our, our lives are right with you. And Lord, that today that you might draw us close to you. Lord, I thank you for the decisions to be made. Lord, and, and that you just might move in our hearts and lives today. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, it leads us to uh, that first question uh, about baptism. Why are we baptized? Why, why is baptism in our life? Why do we do that in a church? You know, uh, I, I've had a lot of folks ask me about baptism. Matter of fact, the uh, Lord's blessed me over the years to be able to celebrate baptism with a lot of folks. Boy, I just, I praise God in every opportunity. Uh, one gentleman was about 85 years old. Uh, when he came and gave his heart to Christ. And I'll never forget, it was a night service, and he came forward and he said, Preacher, he said, I want to be saved. And uh, I thought, praise God. Now, this was a guy, if you would have known him and said his name in the community, everybody in the community would have shook their head and said, Boy, he's a tough one there, that guy is. Uh, but he started coming to church with his wife. Uh, I visited with him several times. I really liked the guy. He's a nice guy. But... He was kind of rough around the edges, so to speak. Bless his heart. And now I can say that without saying anything. You know, once you say something bad and say bless their heart, it's okay. Because <laughs> when you're in the South. And so he was, boy, he had a tough life. He, and he grew up hard. And that's all he knew. And so when he came and gave his heart to Christ that night, um, he looked at me and said, now I want to be baptized. And, and it was I'm going to tell you what, it was an effort for him to get up from the pew that he was in and walk to the front. And I thought, boy, bless his heart, we're going to, we're going to have to work on this one now. And, and I said, well, brother, we'll get you baptized. I can promise you that. If that's where you feel like the Lord's calling in your heart, we're, we're thankful that you've asked Jesus into your heart and you want to be baptized, we'll get you baptized. And uh, he said, I don't want any help. <laughs> we'll get you baptized, you know. Huh? We'll, we'll work on it. Anyway, bless his heart. I'm telling you what, it was a struggle every step because you had to climb a flight of steps to get up into that baptistry that we had. He got up in there and uh, got him down into the baptistry. Bless his heart. I mean, he had a struggle. It was, it was all he could do to get down in there. And uh, after I had told him that, you know, we were going to celebrate baptism. And he had asked him if he asked Jesus into his heart to be his Savior. He said yes. And I said in obedience to the commands of our Lord and Savior. And by the time I got to Savior, he was on his way down. He was ready to go. He about baptized himself that day. And he come popping up. And I want to tell you what, that man, when he come popping up, was one of the happiest people I've ever seen in my entire life. You see, he followed Jesus. And he didn't need anybody's help to follow Jesus. You know what he told me? He said, preacher, I didn't need anybody's help to get my life in a bad state. And I don't need anybody's help to, to get me closer to Jesus. That's something I got to do on my own. 
And I thought, what a, what a thought. And boy, I tell you what, from that moment on, his heart was just one that he loved his Lord and whatever he could do to serve his king. Not too, all, not too late or after that, the Lord called him home. And his family got to celebrate in the fact that they knew that he was with Christ. What, a, what an exciting thing that, that happened that day when he, was, when he asked Jesus into his heart. And then when he followed through in baptism. Why are we baptized? We're baptized because Jesus set the standard. That's why Jesus was baptized. The Bible says there in Matthew, as I read from the baptistry this morning, that Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You see, Jesus set the standard for you and for me in our lives for baptism. Now, he did this in such a way because there's symbolism involved here for us. The, now let me get to this. There's a lot of folks in life that, that, that they, they don't maybe understand a little bit about baptism. And let me share this with you. Uh, I, I went to a, uh, the Lord blessed me to be able to go to uh, Cincinnati Bible College and Seminary. Now Cincinnati Bible College and Seminary, you had to know what you believed when you got there. Uh, that's the way I felt. I, I need to know what I believed and why I believed it. Cincinnati Bible College and Seminary was run by a different faith than what I was. I'm Southern Baptist. They were Church of Christ and Christian Church. They were joined together with that little, um, that little uh, college, that little seminary there. And so when I got there, I had to know why I believed it. And, and so uh, a man, bless his heart, is, see I said bless his heart again, I'm good, I'm covered. Uh, his name was R.J. Kidwell. Uh, he was one of the professors there. He was an elderly man, and uh, he was a pastor of, of a church of Christ. And he told me uh, in the middle of, of class one day, of course, they knew I'm the Baptist boy. That's what they knew. And they liked to pick on me. And, and he said, in class, in order to be saved, you got to be baptized. Because, he said it this way, it's the water that washes away the sin. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something. I believe that we ought to be following in baptism as our first act of obedience. But the blood of Jesus Christ is what washes away my sin. And so I, I kind of looked down. I guess I may have cocked my head a little bit or shook it somewhat. And he said, Mr. Adams, don't you agree with me there? <laughs> Brother, now let me get this. I may not understand. So... You know, I, I, I've been to college now. I, I know a little bit about how transference happens. So the water washes away the sin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I asked him, I said, do you keep water in your baptistry all the time? And he said, yes, I do. If somebody, I said, so somebody asked Jesus into their heart today after class, you're going to take them straight to your church and baptize them. He said, yes. He said, if, that, if I didn't, they'd spend eternity in hell. That's what he told me. And I said, so do you ever change that water? You got a filter? What do you got? He, no, we, we drain it out. Just so you know, that's water that it, it drains right out. Now, for those of you that don't know, baptistry water doesn't go through the septic system. It drains out on the ground. It's holy water is what's considered. And so that water goes out. And I said, so you drain that water and it runs down into the, I said, you got a special holding spot? No, it runs down to the creek, he said. I said, so the water that contains the sin runs down out of your baptistry into the creek and a cow drinks out of the creek and I eat at McDonald's. Now, I don't know if McDonald's uses beef or not, but I'm just <laughs> following me. I eat at McDonald's and that, that cow that drank the sin, the sin's in the cow, I eat the beef. Am I full of sin again? He didn't like me much, so... And I, I gave him this, and this is the way it happened. This is the, a, a true story that, that happened to me when I was a minister of youth. I, I asked him this question. I said, now, I, the reason I asked this, because I have a, a, a testimony of a man that, that had lived a life apart from God. He had lived a life away from Jesus. Matter of fact, his family called me. The man was in the hospital. 
And they said, Daddy is dying. Would you come and, and, and speak to him just one more time? Because folks have witnessed to him over the years and, and he's always turned them away. I didn't know it at the time, but the last preacher that went to see him, he whipped him and sent him home. That's the truth. And I said, yes, I'll come and speak to him. They were from down in eastern Kentucky. And so I went and, and visited him there in the hospital. It was Christmas Eve. I remember it. I mean, I can see it in my mind right now. They had moved him to a little room because he was dying and they didn't know what was wrong with him. They couldn't, they couldn't discern what was happening to him. The doctors and nurses, a very good hospital up there, couldn't figure out what was going on with him. But they said his body is shutting down. And they put him into a room so his family could be around him so when he died, they were not disturbed. And when I got there, I told the family, I said, you all go to the chapel and you pray and I'm going to go visit with him. And I walked into his room and there he sat, a, a, a frail looking older man. And I walked up to him and we began talking. And of course, we talked a little bit about Eastern Kentucky. I have some family from down in there. And, and before you know it, you know, down in Eastern Kentucky, if you talk long enough, you're related. That's the way that works. You know, we, we were talking about places and talking about things and and then I finally looked at him and I said, have you ever given thought to asking, your, asking Jesus into your heart to be your Savior? Big old tears welled up in his eyes and they started rolling down them old weathered cheeks. And you know what he told me? He said, son, God wouldn't want me. God wouldn't want me for all awful things I've done in my life. He said, you don't know how bad I've been. He said, I, I used to beat my wife. I was terrible to my children. I was a drunkard. I spent our money. I ran around on them. I did all. He said, I'm a terrible man. God wouldn't want me. And I told him, not only does God want you, but he gave his son to die on a cross for your sins. And that day, that night, Christmas Eve night, he gave his heart to Jesus right there in that hotel, or right there in that hospital room. And I looked over at that professor and I said, are you going to tell me that that man died and went to hell because I didn't pick him up and drag him into the bathroom and shove him under some water somewhere? And he, he looked at me and said, oh, now we're getting into judgment. And I said, no, sir, I'm right in the middle of your theology is what I'm at. That's where I'm at. Because this is what I know about my Jesus. My Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. And that's all that's needed is my Jesus. Now, as a Christian, when we come to a saving knowledge of Christ, we want to follow in baptism because baptism symbolizes the life of our Savior. For us, as we go into that water, we come in as a sinful man. That's who we are. And the symbolism that happens there is that we admit our sin, that we admit that we've asked Jesus into our heart to be our Savior. And when we go down into that water and are immersed, and listen, I believe in immersion. That's what I believe in. Because it's the symbol of my Savior. He didn't halfway go down into the grave. He went all the way down into the grave. He went down into the grave. And He rose victorious. When God called him. And that's that symbolism when we come up that we are raised a new creature in Christ. Whew, that's exciting stuff. Amen. Y'all remember the day you was baptized? Oh man, I remember that day. I, I, I want to tell you what, that's a day I don't forget. Not because that was the day I was saved. You see, I was saved before that. But that was the day that my public, I was publicly acknowledging the Savior that I followed. Yeah, we, we follow in baptism. And baptism is a, a symbol for you and for me. We enter as that old person. We're buried in the water and raised a new creature. Now, there's also something important to understand about the timing of our baptism. If you read here in this passage of Scripture, look here with me. And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same Scripture, and he preached unto him Jesus. This is verse 35. And then verse 36 says, And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all 
all thine heart thou mayest. You see, there's a, a, a step that has to happen before we're baptized. We have to come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior and as our Lord. You see, this is what's called being scripturally baptized. I know a lot of folks over the years that I have spoken to that have told me, Preacher, things just aren't right in my life. Because when I was a kid, I was in Bible school, and some of my friends went forward, and I went forward with them, and then I got baptized. But it wasn't until a little bit later in my life that I truly realized that I was a sinner, and it was after that point that I asked Jesus into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Do I need to be rebaptized? That's what they asked me. And I say, you need to be scripturally baptized. Because the first time you got in there, you got wet. You want to get scripturally baptized. That's when you are baptized following salvation. Because that's the way God's word says to do it. I don't know about y'all, but if God says to do something a certain way, I want to do it that way. How about y'all? You know what? We were out on a trip. I, I, I think I told you about Crystal getting us lost. Well, there was a time. I'm not going to tell that story again. It was a long week, y'all. And so I'm not going to tell it again, sweetheart. Bless your heart. I don't know if that works. I don't think it works there. <laughs> you didn't see the look I just got, did you? I, that ain't going to work, Daniel. You know, we were out there, and, and I had Siri up. Now, now Siri, I, I like Siri. Siri, I want to go to this place, and she tells me how to get there. Now, while I was there, I told Crystal, I said, there's another app called Waze. And I said, I want to see which one gets us there better. So I brought that app up. And I want you to know they argued back and forth. You wouldn't believe it. One of them said, turn this way, turn right. And the other one said, turn left and turn. Oh, it was bad for a little while. I just went straight. That's what I did. You know. And then they recalculating. And then they fuss at you. You know, she, one, I think one of them just said, just do what you're going to do. I think that's what she said after a little while. You know, I knew I wanted to go to the little gas station. And they don't understand. You got to get gas sometime. And they'll fuss at you while you're off the road. Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Turn right. And finally, a little message come on there. When you come back to the route, then I'll tell you more. <laughs> you know, I just... You know, there's a lot of folks in life that have been following a wrong path for a long time. But let me tell you something that's wonderful. The Holy Spirit does not give up on you. The Holy Spirit doesn't say, well, when you get your life right, then I'll start talking to you again. No, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit continues to press in our heart and press in our life about things that are wrong with God. And the Holy Spirit draws us to God. That's what His job is. And for you and for me in our life to evaluate our life and say, Lord, is there areas of my life that you're not pleased with? Are there things in my life that I need to get right with you? But Bless her heart, a little sweet lady, 75 years old, came up to me on a Sunday and said, I need to get scripturally baptized. I have fought with this for 30 years. That's what she told me. I got baptized when I was a child. 30 years I've been dealing with that. She said, I got away from church for a long time. And when I got back, she said, the Lord's been dealing with my heart over this for 30 years and I've been fighting it. And she said, I'm ready to give my heart and give my all to Christ. If it's something I need to redo, then I need to do it right. You know, brothers and sisters, when it comes to our spiritual life, there's things that we need to do right with God. Our heart needs to be right. Philip, Tells this Ethiopian, if thou believest with all thy heart, thou may be baptized. Thou mayest be. So it leads us to that question, who should be baptized? Who should be baptized? All who have come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You see, following Christ, this is our first act of obedience. It's not a condition of salvation, but it's the first act of obedience that you and I have in our life. 
our spiritual life. When we ask Jesus into our heart to be our Savior and Lord, that's our first act. That's one of the great things that we get to celebrate. The celebration of that decision of Christ. Not too long after we got married, Crystal came and we were talking and she said to me, she said, you know what? When I was little, when I was young, she said, my mom and daddy told the preacher that I had been asking questions. And she said, the pastor came to me and said, your mom and daddy said, you've been asking questions. And she said, yes. And uh, he said, well, don't you think it's time to get baptized? And she said, I got baptized, but I never got saved. And she said, it wasn't until later on in my life that I've asked Jesus into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. And brothers and sisters, I want to tell you what. There was no greater joy in this pastor's life than to be able to baptize his wife. It wasn't a condition of salvation, but she wanted to get it right with God. And to get her heart and didn't want anything holding her back from that. You know, Philip says, here's water, or the Ethiopian says, here's water. What doth hinder me from being baptized at our earliest opportunity that we should be baptized? Philip said, if thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, this is how it says it there. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. For me and for you today, I want you to know, we know the good news right now. We know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And we know that every single one of us here today need a Savior because there is none righteous, no, not one, is what my Bible says. Every single one of us need a Savior. And because we need a Savior, Jesus paid that penalty for you and for me so that we wouldn't have to. He paid the penalty for our sin because He loves us so much. And you know what today? His call first in our heart and first in our life is for us to come and accept Him as a Savior and Lord. You can do that right where you are right now. You can lower your head and say, Jesus, I know that I've sinned. And I know that you died on a cross for my sin. I know you have. Today I ask you to forgive my sin and come into my heart and be my Savior and Lord. And just that fast, the angels in heaven celebrates what my Bible says over just one. Maybe you've made that decision in your heart today. I want to share with you, it's not a condition of your salvation but it's the joy of your salvation now is to come and follow in baptism. To let others know that decision that you've made and say, praise God, I follow in Jesus. I'm going to be identified with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's my Savior. Maybe that's you today to step out from where you are and come and say, I'm coming to identify with Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you've been a Christian for a long time. And you say, you know what? I haven't been scripturally baptized. You're not alone, brother, sister. You're not. I, I've met a lot of folks over the years that will tell me that. I, I was baptized when I was young. and I got saved after I was baptized. I encourage you today. Make that right. Make that right. Step out from where you are and say, I want to get that scripturally baptism. I want to get my life right with Christ. Step out from where you are today and come. Maybe the Lord's placed a burden on your heart or your life today. Maybe somebody, maybe you know somebody that's struggling in their life. Maybe just to come kneel down at the altar and pray. However the Lord calls and however he leads in your life, you come to him because today is the day of salvation. Today's the day that he's here. My Bible says even where just two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. He is here today and he waits on you. He's waiting on that decision in your heart and in your life. Maybe today you're looking for a church home. I'm going to share with you, you can't find a finer church home than the family at Laura Bluff Baptist Church. You can't. The Lord moves in your heart. Maybe join the church home. I encourage you, you come. As he calls and as he leads, you respond. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your word.
God, I just praise you because you love us so much. God, that love is, is a love that drives us in our heart and our life. It, it, as your Holy Spirit speaks to us today to, to follow you. Lord, wherever we are in life, it may be someone to step out from where they are and say, I need Jesus as my Savior. Maybe somebody to step out from where they are and say, I've asked Jesus into my heart and now I want to follow in baptism. Maybe today, Father, that there's someone that says, I was baptized when I was young. I got saved after I was baptized. I want to get my heart right with the Lord. And maybe that's someone today. Father, maybe you've placed a burden on our heart that we just need to come to the altar and pray for. God, I pray whatever decision we have to make today that we do that for you. God, move in us, I pray. Lord, that you would receive the glory and honor for what you're doing in our lives. And God, that we can celebrate, Lord, the blessings of this day and every day because of Jesus. Lord, be with us now and lead us, I pray, in a time of your invitation. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We're going to stand together today and sing a hymn.